Good morning, folks. I am here at the Ardaster Gardens and Zoo on Providence Island in the Bahamas. And just thinking about the perspective of zoos and aquaria and the science behind you know, supporting those types of organizations. The Ardaster Gardens and Zoo, I think, is a really good example of a mix of um, animals under human care and then a property that's also welcoming to uh, uh, wild animals. Um, you can see there's lots of butterflies and moths flying around. Um, you just heard a Bahama wood star hummingbird. Um, there's a red-legged thrush. Um, there's lots of different plants that flower at different times. They supplement with bird feeders, hummingbird feeders. Um, lots of nectar producing flowers. There's orchids of many different types, native and non-native trees, um, and a lot of water features. So all of these things make the place particularly welcoming to wild birds and insects. Um, so I think it's a nice setup. And I got 13 bird species here today, not counting the ones that are um, unable to move around or leave the property. So I think it's a, a really nice place to visit. Um, if you get the chance while you're in Nassau, I think it's a great place. And also a lot of students in the Bahamas. Ooh, check that out. A lot of students in the Bahamas. This is their first experience with wildlife or animals and nature like this. So that was a Bahama with saw hummingbird feeding from that bromeliad. Um, and so I think a lot of children in the Bahamas get these experiences here at the Adastra Gardens and Zoo and then fall in love with nature. Whereas there aren't a lot of guided experiences on New Providence where they can do a similar activity. So check it out if you get the chance. Um, and open your eyes not just to the um, animals that are under human care, but also the ones that are just wandering around the property and doing their natural thing. Right. You'll have a great day. Hope you got a little more perspective on zoos and aquaria today. Bye-bye.